So these are a what you would consider a Texas wildflower, but they're not probably even considered wildflowers because these are actually just dandelions, but they're really, really pretty out here in my culvert in front of my house. Um, yeah, they're just super pretty. And there are some little flowers here that I don't know what they are, but I'll put it in my one of the later segments of this video. I'll get right down there to it. They are, they look like they're white and they look kind of like baby's breath, but they're actually a very, very light lilac color. They're a really pretty little flower. Here's another little section of them. And here is my culvert that's loaded with these dandelions. And dandelions are edible. Uh, the leaves are edible. The rabbits seem to really like it, like them. And here they are real close. Yeah, they're really actually very pretty. I don't guess I ever paid much attention to how pretty the flowers are. I guess the reason I'm really noticing them this time is because my culvert is so full of them. And the ridge up above my culvert, that was, which is what I'm showing you now, that I um, just never paid attention. But since it's so pretty here, I'm really noticing how pretty these flowers actually are. Dandelions are actually edible. And this is the little part that's edible. It's right what's at the ground here. And the rabbits really like them. And I've had them myself. And they're actually, they can be, they're super nutritious. And they can actually be kind of uh, uh, bitter if you wait till they get big. They're kind of bit, better if you get them kind of young. The young leaves are better. But they're very nutritious, which is something people don't make a habit of eating. So here's something kind of interesting. I'm going to get down here and show you. This is some kind of a bug or spider nest, and it's bubbly. It's totally bubbly. Let me go over here. There's a couple more of them. And, yeah, it's just bubbles. Basically just bubbles. It's some kind of spider. I'll see if I can find out what kind of spider it is, and I'll include it in my later section videos so yeah that's very interesting here's another one it's just a big bubbly bubbly something and I'll see if I can find out what 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 it is it's a nest but here's another one let's get over here totally bubbly all right, let me show you a couple more flowers and then I'll close this out. I know they all look the same. Nothing different about them. Just in case you're curious, I live next to a freeway. It's a small freeway, but it's still a freeway. There goes a truck. And there's cars going down this road day and night, even at two o'clock in the morning. If you have insomnia and you come in here, there's still cars. They're a little farther apart, but there's a ton of them, so. Um, anyway, it's a, it's a full-fledged highway, even though it's not very wide, and, uh, it's not very wide, and it's, uh, you wouldn't seemingly think it's a highway, but it is, so. All right, well, let me get a couple more of these little flowers. All right, that's pretty. I can't believe how pretty they are. I just never really noticed. You know how you go through life, and you see something all your whole life, and, you never really pay any attention to it. But yes, these are very pretty. Oh, before I go in, I'll tell my culvert story. Um, when I first inherited this house, I had to mow the lawn and I had a brand new push mower, which is very inadequate for this lawn. But at any rate, I was mowing the lawn uh, probably about the first time I did it. And uh, I ran over a bullfrog in the culvert. And I was sick at heart for two days because I really like frogs. 
well, I actually like all animals and, you know, I didn't want to kill the frog. Well, luckily, I didn't kill the frog. I actually didn't even, you know, chop an arm off or a leg or anything. He seemed pretty shocked, but I think I may have kind of nicked an arm or something. I really didn't even see any blood, but uh, he was in shock for sure because he sat there for quite a while before he made any moves, and, you know, normally he would be scared of me, so... But I'm telling you, I was sick at heart for two days over the thing, just the close call, because, I mean, I, I know most people don't care about stuff like that, but I do. I hate to run over something or, you know, hit a dog or any of that kind of stuff. So, now that we have so many bunnies, I've been super careful not to, you know, not to drive fast in the driveway, because some of them are small, so... But anyway, that's my bullfrog story. I really like frogs. And uh, when I was a kid, when I was little, I called them flogs. So uh, I loved frogs even from, you know, the start of my life. So I really didn't want to harm the bullfrog. But luckily, the bullfrog made it. And I always hoped to see him again, but I don't think I ever did. And actually, my son moved in and he started taking over the lawn mowing. So I didn't have to deal with it but anyway that's my bullfrog story of a near miss kill <laughs> thank goodness i didn't hurt him because i was still sick for those two days i mean really really you know whenever i thought about it my stomach would just heave <laughs> i'm a little oversensitive however as i've gotten older i've gotten better but that was one of those times when i was really really traumatized by the fact that i almost ran over the bulldog bulldog <laughs> oh gosh bullfrog sorry old lady thing well here's some little white wildflowers i don't know what they are right now but i'll find out and put it in one of my upcoming videos i'm gonna piece together a couple of uh flower videos six wildflowers boy it's crowded here because i'm right next to the freeway I'm in a safe area, but I'm right next to the freeway. It's really very pretty flowers. They're tiny though. They're only about a half inch long. So, really pretty little flowers. All right, well, it's definitely clover and I don't see any four leaves, uh, but it's very pretty. Well, I pretty well determined that this flowering plant is wood sorrel. Initially, I thought it was clover, so I took several videos of it as clover, and I was calling it clover. So, since the flowers are closed up, I'm going to go ahead and include uh, one video of that with probably the clover part removed. And uh, just show you more what the flowers look like when they're open. They're really pretty. They're pretty bright purple, but they are closed up now. Apparently, a lot of flowers close up at night, so this is just another one that does that. I really like this, though. I like the way the leaves look. It's just really pretty. So, I've learned a lot about Texas wildflowers today, and it's been really fun making these videos. I'm actually doing this over a couple of days, but because I'm not near some of the flowers I'm going to include. But um, it's been really fun. I've really enjoyed it, and I've learned a lot today. Okay, so I'm back at the, the dandelions. I've learned quite a bit today. I was kind of shocked earlier when I came out here and they were uh, all tucked inside the green part. I'm like, where did the flowers go? But uh, as it turns out, dandelions are one of those flowering plants that the flower goes to sleep at night. It gets back, you know, it folds up and, and um, stops being a flower temporarily. And in the morning, it'll wake up and come back out. I found out a lot about dandelions today. I mean, as a kid, you know, we just blew them in the air and thought that was fun. But dandelions are actually pretty interesting. They're used in a lot of countries for medicinal purposes. They are edible. Um, even, the, even the flower is edible. They don't really, you can eat the stem, but that milky juice inside of it tends to be a little bitter. The adult leaves are better cooked rather than eaten raw. The young, fresh leaves are better, you know, are fine to eat raw. They're not as bitter. 
uh, but it's extremely good for you. Um, and uh, found out that milky juice is actually used to, for one thing, um, it's got many medicinal purposes, but it's actually used to uh, uh, burn off warts. And so that's kind of interesting. I may try that. I have a couple of small warts that would be okay to get rid of. So, um, and I got a little upset when I was doing some research because Apparently, there are some plants that are called false dandelions, and there's four or five of them, and they're poisonous, relatively poisonous. I didn't study to see if you would die from it or anything, but, and so I was a little bit alarmed because here I am talking about plants, you know, the fact that they're edible, but I have determined these are definitely dandelions, and one of the reasons I've determined that is because one of these plants that has the flowers right here had a dandelion. Now I knocked the most of it off with my hands earlier, but this is the same flowers as what I'm looking at. So anyway, it was very interesting. I've learned a lot about Texas wildflowers today. So, and I've really enjoyed looking this stuff up because I've seen this, these flowers all my life because I've lived here almost all of my life with the exception of two months and um i've seen these flowers and i never knew what they were called i mean i knew these were dandelions but some of these other flowers that i'm going to be showing you i didn't know what they're called so it's been a good education in uh, texas wildflowers so all right i'll be adding more Well, these are some kind of little wildflowers. I think. Yeah. I don't really know what they are. It's kind of hard to photograph them without pulling them toward me. They don't really have much of a flower look in a way, but I would say they probably are some type of flower. So let me see if I can identify them in another segment. Well, these are more Texas wildflowers. These are pink evening primrose. And I'm doing this in the heat of the day here. So hopefully the colors will come out. I'll actually kind of make a shade here with my body. Um, get over here and do it. And I'm going to be kind of in here, but it's okay. Uh, here they are over there. There's a very pretty little set of it over there. Let's see if I can get a little closer. They are very lightly pink with a little bit of a yellow center. Now I'm taking this in front of while I'm in while I'm doing this, I'm going to throw this in. This is my wood rack that I came up with. It's four concrete blocks and two landscape timbers. And this works really well and it's pretty cheap. It was probably under, at the time, $25. Of course, building supplies have gone way up. So at this point, it's not gonna be that cheap, probably. But still, it's a very sturdy rack. Right now, there's just a bunch of crazy wood on it because it's spring almost summer and we've used up the firewood that we had for the winter so these pieces are actually too big to uh these pieces are too big to put on um actually on the rack we've just kind of slung them over it and um, um we need to cut these and make them a better size but they're just slung over here right now because we don't need them so but anyway um as you can see, it's double the double uh, the double concrete blocks, which you could put it down lower, but we decided to put it higher rather than lower. The advantage to this, besides the fact that it's cheap, we've got them kind of, well, let me backtrack. We've got them kind of uh, a little bit spaced apart, and the um, this uh, patio that they're on is a little uneven now. It needs to actually be have cement put back on it but um 
you could you know i've got another one at my other house and it the blocks are actually closer together you could put the landscape timbers on the bottom or the top but i actually like them on the top better uh, because it keeps the the wood higher off the ground so anyway it works really well as a works really well as a um wood rack so and it is still relatively inexpensive especially if you could catch the timbers on on uh, sale and you know a lot of times people have a couple of concrete a uh, well you need four but um a few concrete blocks hanging around their house so it might not even cost you anything except the wood timbers anyway well let me do the flowers one more time let me get over there see if i can uh do these evening primrose again here's a couple of them i'm gonna turn them turn them towards me i got a little pink food color on me i think <laughs> on my wrist i still have food color from my cake project the other day uh coming around to me here they are again so there's these are pretty um here's some that are about to bloom supposedly these go kind of die every night and then they come back the next day so i haven't really noticed them doing that but i wasn't paying attention okay well so this is this is uh as i said this is more of texas wildflowers i'm doing a whole segment on the, all the wall, wall wildflowers around here so i'm back at the wood sorrel to show you the opened up flowers. And these flowers are really taking their time to get open. The dandelions that I did earlier this morning were already out and I was out there pretty early. Uh, these are just real pretty though. These are not very big flowers. They're only about a half inch across, but they're pretty. They're a very pretty color. The side over here doesn't seem to want to do anything. <laughs> they're not coming out. So, but these are coming out. In fact, they've actually come out even more since I've been standing here, which is maybe five minutes. So, well, I do want to say something about some of the other flowers I mentioned. The tiny white flowers that have a lilac, lilac tint appear to be baby's breath, wild baby's breath. It's a different species slash species than what is in the florist. Uh, but they're, but they, from a distance, they do look like regular baby's breath, but when you get up closer, they have a looser leaf formation, just like these, you know, it's kind of spread out looking, whereas the baby's breath at the florist is kind of tight. It's like a, you know, kind of ballish. So, but anyway, it does appear to be baby's breath. Now the other white flower I saw that's uh, kind of like it's ba it's ballish, and it looks like you tied an invisible rubber band in the middle of it because there's like a top and a bottom. That appears to be white clo white Dutch clover. And if it's not white Dutch clover, it is a form of white clover. Um, the bugs, the spit the uh, spitty kind of nest uh, are made by what are called spittle bugs, also known as frog hoppers. And the, the spit is, it looks kind of like a nest. The spit is waste products. And the purpose of it is protection from the elements and also from predators. So I thought that was really neat. I didn't ever know what those were. And actually, I don't even know that I paid that much attention to them. So uh, that pretty much uh, covers the things that I'm behind on as far as telling you what um, what things are. I, can't, I would like to recommend a good website. It's, I'll put it in the description area which is in the subscription area and it's called it's texas wildflower and that's singular flower pictures.com and it had a lot of information and good pictures of texas wildflowers 
All right, well, um, when I leave here today, I'm going to make my uh, last entry into the Texas wildflower segment. And um, I'll be doing that in just a little while. And then this will complete the whole segment. All right, well, I hope you like this part where I explain things that I hadn't previously explained. Well, I'm back to photograph the dandelion flowers back out. Isn't nature incredible? You know, these flowers going in every night and coming back the next day. They're just really, really pretty. I don't guess I've ever paid any attention to dandelion flowers before. Anyway, here's a few and I'll go over here to a few more. These are right out in my, above my culvert. And my culvert's loaded with them. And last night when I was doing my moth video, I was kind of amazed at the huge amount of moths. I was just looking in the Texas section, but uh, the moths, not only were there a huge amount of them, but the variety of them is just incredible. I mean, some of them are black and white. Some of them are super colorful. Some of them look like something out of a science fiction movie. I mean, you know, just nature is just so incredible. It really is. So these are my second flavored flower, Texas wildflower, and they are called Queen Anne's Lace. In this pretty, look at this. That is just one starting to bud out, but isn't that pretty? And then here's a big one. And you can just imagine a field of these. I'm gonna walk over here. Here's where they're starting to bud out, right here. Um, and then here's one that's, you know, not too big. I'm gonna go over here. Um, it's really hard to find a place where you can do this safely. I mean, there's hundreds of them across the street, but I'm on an access road and it's really not too safe. So here's one that's uh, budding out. I'm gonna stop this for a second. No, I'm gonna not stop it. Uh, I saw some close by that this really looks like a good pile. I'm by a church, so. So these are some sort of little daisy and I don't know exactly what they are. So I will put some, I'll put it in the subscription description slash description area as to what kind of daisy they are. They're really tiny. They're only about a half inch wide. So um, here's some more of the evening, pink evening primrose. And there's some dandelions that are trying to come out. So I'm gonna shut this off and just walk over to by the church where there's a whole bunch of the Queen Anne's legs. So this is by the parking lot of the church and you can kind of get a, an idea of what like a whole field of these would look like. And these come out after the um, blue bonnets are pretty much gone. Sometimes the blue bonnets are actually still here but they're buried by other flowers. So, um, and these are large. They're about two foot tall. So, I just love these. They're my second favorite, as I said, so. Here's something too. It's like a little purple flower. They're kind of tall also. I will put in the description what they are if I can find out, so. There's a little splotch of them that are real pretty. Anyway, these are just really, really pretty alongside the highway. Uh, really, really beautiful. Because there, there will be tons of them. Here's some more of those little purple flowers. And, uh, yeah, I love these. For one thing, they're large. I actually favor large I actually favor large flowers over smaller ones. These have little bitty, I don't know if that's a bee or not. Um, there was a little bitty thing that looked like a super tiny bee. So um, here's some more. This pile right here is really nice. Got a lot of them. 
All right, well, these are Queen Anne's lace. Here's one of the ones that's developing, uh, coming out, you know. They're super delicate looking, very pretty. I just love them to death. Okay, that's the Queen Anne's lace that uh, grow wild in Texas. And they usually come out around the beginning of, end of April, beginning of May is their time frame. So that's when they come out the most, really. All right, well, thanks for watching my video. Hope you like the flowers.